Yes. The, the Breakfast Club, mm. bitches. Who's donkey of the day today? <sighs> well, Ed Sharon, donkey of the day for Monday, July 17th goes to Gary Hillman. I, just, I feel like I just be telling y'all the same things over and over and over and over again, but Gary Hillman is 48 years old and he was arrested for being more than three times over the drunk driving limit. Uh, let me tell you something. I don't know why we are still getting on this radio and telling people not to drink and drive. With all these ride share companies that exist today, there's absolutely no reason. But here's the thing. It's one thing to get behind the wheel. It's another to get behind the wheel and still not know when to quit. See, Gary Hillman was determined to either kill somebody or kill himself when he was driving drunk. What do you mean, Uncle Charlotte? Well, Gary was pissy drunk. And on Friday around 2.50 p.m., clearly day drinking, okay, clearly just left for brunch or something, he collided with a security fence after going too fast around a corner. He failed to stop and report the accident, and he carried on driving. Now, he said he was just drinking vodka. I don't understand people who get this drunk because you would think a crash into a fence would sober you up. You mm -hmm. would think a crash into a fence would make you realize, man, I've had one too many. But no, Gary kept driving. And then as he was approaching a roundabout, he crashed into a central reservation, which caused his airbags to be deployed. Now, mm -hmm. at this point, I definitely don't think driving would be possible, but Gary kept going. Right? He turned around on the highway and stuck his head out of the driver's window in order to see over the airbags. He was said to be driving slowly, but he veered onto the wrong side of the road on which he was traveling for three quarters of a mile. At one point, Gary drove head on directly towards an ambulance, which had his blue lights and sirens on. Imagine that. This ambulance on the way to help somebody in need, maybe even had somebody in there already, and Gary could have hit them head on and killed everyone in the ambulance, okay? One of the officers said it's nothing short of a miracle that there wasn't an extremely serious incident leading to serious injury or death. Now, when police finally caught up with Gary's stupid ass, his blood test was taken, which revealed he had 249 mg's of alcohol and 100 mg's of blood. I have no idea what that means. I just know the legal limit is 80, and he was three times over the limit. Now. Gary did say he was remorseful and his lawyer said he had hit rock bottom at the time of the offense and he recognizes there was a problem and he has been in contact with Alcoholics Anonymous to help rebuild his life. Good for you, Gary. That's what we want to happen. But that doesn't mean you will not be held responsible for the consequences of your actions. This man has clearly watched one too many Fast and Furious movies. All right. This man thought he was Dominique Toretto. How many times has Vin Diesel's car exploded and he kept driving it? All right. I don't know. How many other ways to tell y'all not to drink and drive? I thought this was something that collectively we all decided was a terrible idea years ago. If you want to drink, stay your ass home, okay? If you want to drink, do it at a friend's house where you don't got to leave. If you want to drink, factor your Uber or Lyft into what you plan to spend that night on drinks because there is no reason to be drinking and driving. No reason at all. There's not one single solitary reason on this third rock from the sun for you to be drinking and driving. Do I have to tell you that each drink you, you know, drive impairs your ability to drink? Wait, what the hell did I just say? Each drink you have impairs your ability to drive. Okay? There, there you go. That's right. If you are drunk, don't drive. All right? Don't even putt. That was a golf reference. Maybe if we make it rhyme, people will listen. <clears throat> Let me try. Allow life to thrive. Don't drink and drive. Look, man, the moral of the story is drinking and driving. There are stupider things to do, but it's a very short list. Please give Gary Hillman the biggest hee haw. I don't, I don't even know any other ways to tell people not to drink and drive no more. I mean, we say it all the time. It's unbelievable at this point. It's like, how many, you know how much money was spent on don't drink and drive campaigns? Yeah. Like, come on. There's nothing I can say. Nothing no. that I can say that somebody shouldn't know already no. about drinking and driving. And like you said, if you're going to go out and drink and drive, maybe just put the Uber or whatever That's right. taxi cab or yes. however you need to get home. Put that in your budget for Come the night. Come on, man. And just think about it. Each drink you drive impairs your ability to drink. You lift. Whatever you need to. I mean, each drink. You know what I'm trying to say here? You drunk now? What am I trying to say? I don't know what you're trying to say. Each drink you have impairs your ability to drive. There you go. There you go. All right. Well, that is your donkey of the day. Shout to BET. We'll see you tomorrow. Everybody else, let's open up the phone line. 800-585-1051. We were talking about Sexy Red. Now, there was a clip of Sexy Red 
Uh, they say performing in front of a school age children it was a high school. I hit oh, the I didn't internet. see her perform. I thought she just showed up. That's what the that's what it, the report said. But she said I actually didn't perform. It was prom week, and I went up there to give the girls bundles and the boys money for haircuts because I remember when I needed help with my prom stuff. That's right. Drop on the clues, mom, for Sexy Red. All of y'all out there talking about the school shouldn't have picked Sexy Red. I think Sexy Red picked the school. So people were upset. They said, you know, they shouldn't have picked Sexy Red. They said, uh, if you don't know who Sexy Red, can you play a snippet of a booty hole? So if they blank it, why you keep saying it? I didn't know you couldn't say booty hole. All right, stop saying it. All right, so people, you know, people are upset. People are saying that, you know, the principal shouldn't have hired her, uh, that, you know, taking teenagers to pound town is not right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the administration man, that allowed this to happen man, needs to be ashamed and fired people, because this is just ridiculous. Uh, I don't think anything was wrong with her going to provide haircuts and bundles for them kids. All right, so we're asking 800-585-1051. What are your thoughts on Y'all this? Y'all worried about the wrong things, man. She did not. If she didn't perform for them kids, no. it shouldn't be an issue. Well, let's talk if about she it. came to that school and, you know, she's garnered enough money from telling people that they booty holes brown that she can buy bundles and haircuts for them kids, I have no problem with it whatsoever. Well, let's talk about it when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Donkey Today is brought to you by the law office of Michael S. Lamisoff. Don't be a donkey. Dial pound 250 on your cell and say the bull if you've been hurt in a construction accident. That's pound 250 from your cell and say the bull. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.